Scotland against France. Uh, they managed to turn things around after last week. Uh, it was a pretty tight game, 17 points to 14, but Scotland get the win at home. Uh, kind of a much-needed win after last week's pretty disappointing result. Uh, it wasn't convincing by either side, to be fair. You'd have to say the, the French uh, seemed down a notch, and the Scots, despite getting a, a pretty a pretty good comeback win, uh, they've still got some areas to improve as well. But this is why we play the warm-up games. Uh, it's about these guys getting fit. There are a few injury concerns, but I'll go over those in a minute. But um, yeah, overall, good job from Scotland. In front of what was a pretty well-attended game, it looked like it was sold out. There were a few empty seats, but I'm not sure if that was kind of a cordoned off section or what, because they were one little bit in the corner seemed empty. But other than that, it seemed beautiful day, beautiful crowd. Pretty good game. Uh, so 17-14. It started off similar to last week with uh, a French winger getting a try. It was Pinot early. Uh, he got an intercept from a Pete Horn pass. Made it 7-0 pretty early, and it was looking a touch concerning uh, for the Scots. Uh, but the French conceded a penalty from the restart, and uh, Laidlaw kicked that to make it 7 points to 3, with France still being in front. Interestingly, Wayne Barnes, who's a ref for the not the best reputation down here in New Zealand, but we hold a grudge for, for a long time down here, uh... He marched the Scots 10 meters for gesticulating. Like, sometimes the guys chat back and, um, you know, they get marched 10 meters, but I'm pretty sure he said it was for for some kind of gesticulating. I don't think he flipped them off or anything, one of the Scottish guys, but, yeah, that was uh, that was a first, I think, for me. Um, but, to be fair, later on, he was good enough, Wayne Barnes, to... Like Scotland had a knock-on advantage and one of their guys kicked the ball forward and it actually ended up running dead. But he, he called advantage over at the kick, but he actually took it back for the scrum because he's like, well, you didn't get any advantage for that. So, yeah, good enough for him to do that. Um, the, you could see some early mistakes in that um, hog missed touch at one point, which was uh, less than stellar. And at that point, you're wondering, uh, is Scotland going to perform at the same level last week? But uh, they were able to, to raise it up. Uh, 16 minutes, Seymour goes off, I think it was for an HAA, he didn't come back on, he was looking a bit ginger, so maybe dazed or, or a bit confused, um, hopefully he's all good, uh, Scotland, I wrote a note, conceding unnecessary penalties, in a quick succession, they had tackling a guy um, who wasn't part of a ruck, they had a late tackle on, uh, I think it was Lopez, and then they had a high tackle, so it was... It was not good. They're piggybacking the French up the field, and then Pinot got his try later on. To be fair, it was on the counter. Gitoun got a nice line break. That guy's got some serious gas. Um, but yeah, on the counter attack, and it was 14-3 after pretty much 26 minutes. So yeah, it was looking worrying for Scotland, with three being the score that they got last week as well. Their scrum did look better. Uh, they weren't dominant with the Scots because they did concede a penalty in the second half of the scrum, but it was definitely better than last week, which was encouraging. Uh, speaking of guys who went off, Lopez went off for, for France as well. Intermac had to come on um, just before half time, And it was just before half time that Scotland got a pretty crucial score. Um, France had a loose ball. Kinghorn gathered it. Uh, Chris Harris went close. Uh, Kinghorn was on for... Um, for Seymour, and he actually looked pretty good, did King Wall, I quite like that guy, and he he put in a good shift, uh, so Harris went close, they went, they went out wide, and Maitland ended up scoring the try, Laidlaw with a pretty good conversion, made it 14 points to 10 at halftime, so looking much better for the Scots, within touching distance, second half, concerningly, Blade Thompson goes off for an HIA, doesn't return, that guy's already had concussion trouble, so that is, yeah, as I said, a bit concerning, um, but Barclay came on for him, and he was well cheered by the crowd, which was good to see. I think it was his first time at Murrayfield for a wee while uh, for Scotland. I noticed that Finn Russell was finding a lot of space out wide uh, with his kicks and just a lot of his chips over. But either the kicks weren't quite right, or the bounce of the ball didn't go their way, or the person wasn't able to gather, or the pass after gathering wasn't the best. It was just, just lacking that kind of final touch or the little bit of execution from Scotland, which... I think in another time may have seen them put on a few more points than they did. Um, Scotland at one point had a five-meter line-out attacking the, the French, and um, they, they lost the ball. 
that wasn't the only time that I did it. I think they did it a couple of times. So this is what I mean. You put yourself in that good position, create the opportunity, but the execution just not quite there. Uh, 59 minutes though, Harris goes over. The, the Scots have gone through some phases. Uh, Harris hits the ball. He runs at the space. Um, he, he runs at pace as well, and he just cuts through. They're not able to get him. I think Dupont maybe tries to get a wee bit of a hands on him over the line, but it's already too late by that point. And uh, the Scots go in front 17-14. That's how the scoreline finished. So for the last 20 minutes, there were no scoring. Uh, another kind of concerning thing is Skinner goes off for Scotland. It looks like a leg injury for him. So we'll see what happens. But as I said, uh, I've written notes. Some loose passes, both sides, still not quite 100%. A lot of turnovers, lineouts not operating 100%. Um, at one point, I think Hogg had a, a nice kick and regather. They couldn't finish it off there like Bergen threw the ball into the grass. So this is just what I'm talking about. Kind of prime example of creating the opportunity but not being able to, to do that final execution. So yeah, finish 17-14. Uh, the final stats on the game, Scotland had 54% possession. So they, they did, especially in the course of that second half, like the, the two French tries were an intercept and a move on the counter. So you definitely felt Scotland were fronting up a lot more, and that's kind of reflected in the stats. Uh, France had to make more tackles, 133 to Scotland, 123. Both sides were tackling, um, like in the 90s or 80s in terms of percentage. So high 80s for Scotland, low 90s for, for France, so pretty good defensively. Uh, both lineouts had a couple of errors. Uh, penalties conceded was 8-7, to seven, so again, pretty even. Uh, interestingly, though, Finn Russell alone had 21 kicks and France as a team had 18. So that was definitely a strategy. This is what I'm talking about, trying to find that space uh, to beat France's defense. And a lot of the time it was close, but just not quite right. Uh, Scotland all up had 36 kicks. In terms of uh, attacking with the ball, Maitland was the top Scot with 30 run meters. Uh, Pinot, similar to last week, 89 run meters. He was definitely busting it up. Uh, defensively, Watson, who was very good again, uh, as always, 19 out of 19 tackles. The guy's a machine. Also managed two turnovers. Vaha Amina uh, had 16 out of 16 for France. Um, I had a quick read after the game uh, that Seymour and Thompson, they seem to be pretty optimistic that those guys will be okay. I was a little bit more concerned about Skinner. He'll need to have a scan. Lopez also seems to be not too bad for the French. It seems to be more precautionary that they brought him off. Um, but yeah, good from Scotland, as I said, not great, but it's definitely better to get that win at home. Um, I feel like they could have won that game by more, uh, France under the pump a wee bit, but they perhaps didn't drop off. Like if you're looking at France to kind of, to go up and down, they weren't that far down. I mean, Scotland at, at, at home is a really tough beast and to get within three points, I guess for them is also encouraging. I think I did hear one of the Scottish guys at the end yell to one of the French guys, I'll see you in Tokyo. So that was, um, I guess that shows what this game means to at least the Scottish guys to get that win. So, um, yeah, not a classic by any means, but I think a good, a good preparation match. There was a bit of tension for both sides, so it was better than last week's. Um, I think this, this match will serve both these sides well. Uh, I'm going to go and watch England and Ireland now. I don't know the score in that one. Um, I've just gotten up. I got up late this morning. My dad called me this morning and said, which scores do you know? And I said, I don't know any of them. And he he sounded like there's something he wanted to tell me, and I'm not sure. He, he asked me where I was up to, and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in the second half of Scotland against France. And he asked me who's leading, and I said, um, France. And he, because at the time they were, he said, hmm. So I'm not sure if it's this game he was talking about or the next one, but I'll soon find out. Um, you guys let me know your thoughts on this game. Um, how did you think it went? How do you think some of the, the Scottish guys went on debut? Because Thompson was on debut and they were, he wasn't the only one. But um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.